action and does the most of what they want. So. Yeah. Okay, I don't know why, but it was working and then it wasn't, so. All right, we just finished the national anthem. Welcome. We're at Box Elder High School for the soccer or the softball game between the Bountiful Red Hawks and the Box Elder Bees. This should be absolutely a tremendous game. Box Elder ranked number one, according to Deseret News, and Bountiful ranked number three. These two teams have had a history of really good games, uh, exceptional teams. Bountiful, let me give you a little bit of uh, history with them. Last year, they were the runners up to Spanish Fork. They lost in the semifinals in 2022, lost in semifinals in 2021. 20 was the COVID year. In 2019, they were the state runner-up, and they were also the state runner-up in 2018, and that was the year that Box Elder beat them in the finals. They actually lost, uh, uh, and then Box Elder had to come back through the winner's bracket and win two at the, the end to win that state championship in 2018. They uh, tied for the region championship last year, both of them with 9-1 records. Bountiful won the region in 2022 with a 9-1 record and won in 2021 with a 9-0 record. Once again, 20 was a COVID year. Bountiful won region with a record of 13-2 in 2019. They won region in uh, 2018 with a 10-2 record. You, you see a trend here. Box Elder won in 2017 and 2016, and, and that's when they both came together in the same region. So since they've been in the same region, since 2016, one of these two teams has won Region 5 in every single year since then. And, and that's why I'm excited to be here for this game. It, it should be a great game. Uh, I'm excited. We'll try to give you some numbers as we go. Um, Right now, we're going to start off with uh, Alvy. Um, she is the first baseman from Bountiful. On the mound for Box Elder is Malin. And behind the plate is Richards. Last year, these two teams split. Bountiful took one eight to six, and, and Box Elder took the next one 11 to six. So it seems like if you can score more than six in this series, you might win. So Malin getting ready to throw the first pitch. And we're off. Called strike. A little bit of a breeze. I don't think it's enough to affect the game. It looks like it's blowing to the east, so out to the left field fence. If anybody can get it up high enough to get it brought over, I don't think it'll affect a ton, though. A bit out. Oh, another called strike. I was thinking it was going to be a bit outside, but once again, I'm not right behind the plate. I'm I'm to the. Pitch is high for a ball. Yates has 13 RBIs on the year with five doubles. She's scoring around the bump, but takes for a strike. Count one and one. Pitch hit hard down to the first base. She grabs it, goes to second, but the runner's in time. So it, Alvey goes on to second for an uh, unassisted play by the first baseman. So that's one out, runner on second.
And that brings up Turpin, number 17. She is the third baseman. Called strike. Apologize, some of our color on one of our cameras especially is not that great. This one that we're looking at right now, so. Another called strike, strike two, no balls. Showing bunt here. I don't think there's any way she's going to bunt. Hits a foul over the first base dugout. Count still 0 2. On the year, Bountiful is 6 and 2, Box Elder 8 and 1. Pitch is high for a ball, count one and two. Hit hard and it goes to fielded cleanly by the shortstop, but she's not going to be in time. For, so she gets an infield hit. Runners on the corners. That brings up, I'm going to attempt this once and then call her by her first name the rest of the game. Tongo Onevai. We'll call her Athena. Sounds good to me, John. Yep, she is at number double zero. She's the catcher for the Red Hawks. So we got runners on the corner, one out. Mountiful's threatening to get some runs here in the first inning. Athena has 14 RBIs on the year with three home runs. That one's popped up over to short, takes it. A little bit of a miscommunication, but runners stay put. So now we have two outs. As we have a pop-up out to shortstop. That'll bring up Miller, number 21. She is the pitcher for today. Ella has two RBIs. She has three doubles on the year and a home run. If Box Elder could get out of this with no runs, that'd be very fortunate for them. Ball just outside. low, maybe low and outside. Seems like he ought to brush that plate off a little bit. It, it's a bit dusty. Maybe that's a problem. <laughs> I don't. I think it was. I think it was a ball. I don't know that <laughs> it could <laughs> could be a problem. It wasn't on that one. That one's going to be a strike. Count one and one. And wh where we're positioned, it, it's, it can be difficult to tell inside, outside. I got a camera that's looking right down the middle, though. Okay. Grounder to short, on over to first, in time. So Box Elder gets out of the inning without giving up any runs. So they have two hits, no runs, no errors, and two left on base, and we'll be right back with you. What if you really could have it all? At Exit Realty, we believe, we believe the home you, you want, want is right there. Right there. <laughs> and we'll help you find it. You can count on us. And you thought we just sold real estate. We, we are Exit, Exit Realty. Realty. Think smart, think, think Exit. Exit. Contact Stephanie Dixon, your Exit Realty Advantage agent at 801-710-5542. Again, Stephanie Dixon for all of your real estate needs.
We've been in business here at Gillis Funeral Chapel for the last 18 years. My wife Lori and I have always felt that family is important and when you have a family owned funeral home, you get personal um, attention than you do than the big corporate funeral homes that are in the area. A lot of funeral homes will just say, here's your bag and thank you for letting us do your services, but we like to go one step further ahead. All right, we're back with you. We got Hall starting off, leading off. She's the center fielder, number three. Pitching for the Red Hawks is Miller. Hill attempts a bunt, or Hall attempts a bunt, and it's fouled off, strike one. Hall has 13 RBIs on the year with four doubles and one home run. Yeah, I think she went around strike two. Count 0 and 2. Foul back, count remains 0-2. The wind's picking up just a bit and it's still uh, heading out towards left field. You may be able to hear it in my microphone. Here, I thought he was just breathing hard, Johnny. Nope, that's gonna be a ball high. Count one and two. Fouled over the backs or the dugout. Count remains one and two. She's managing to stay alive. Once again, fouled up over the backstops. Count remains one and two. It seems like I'm a parrot on this and just keep re repeating myself. Here comes the pitch. Fouled. Out to the third base side once again. I haven't kept count of the pitch count, but that's got to be about <laughs> five or six foul balls. About three or four of them after having two strikes. Ball outside, now the count's two and two. Oh, and she gets her strikeout. So out number one after really staying alive for quite some time. That'll bring up Checkets uh, in the second spot. She's the shortstop. That out did not go uh, unearned. <laughs> no, it didn't. But I'll tell you what it does is it gives her a lot of looks at that pitcher. So the next time up, it, it could prove to be worthy. 
Jackets has 10 RBIs on the year, a couple of doubles and a home run. Swing and a miss. So Miller doing a really good job of pitching so far. She is one of the state leaders in strikeouts. Ball high, count one and one. Foul back, count one and two. Checkers takes high, ball count two and two. That was the same count Hall had and then she went off for about five foul balls. There's one out, nobody on base. We're in the bottom of the first inning. Bountiful went scoreless in the top half. And another strikeout. Strikeout number two, and that'll bring up Baker, number 21, the second baseman. Showing bunt. Bring it back and she'll swing and miss. <clears throat> the one thing that Miller's been able to do is stay ahead of the count in each of the three batters she's faced. And it must have been just a bit outside, count one and one. Popped up over the backstop. I can't see it. I hope it doesn't hit me in the head. <laughs> so that gives us two strikes. Count one and two. I think she likes that count. Yeah, once again, she's staying ahead of the batters on the count, and uh, it just makes it so much easier for the pitcher. The pressure's on the batter. And a swing and a miss, and uh, Miller strikes out the side. That, that's uh, all of them. That's, that's some good pitching. So no hits, no runs, no errors. And we will be right back with you. No. What if you really could have it all? At Exit Realty, we believe, we believe the home you, you want, want is right there. Right there. And we'll help you find it. You can count on us. And you thought we just sold real estate. We are Exit Realty. Think smart, think exit. Contact Stephanie Dixon, your Exit Realty Advantage agent at 801-710-5542. Again, Stephanie Dixon for all of your real estate needs. The following was performed by everyday writers like you. Please try it home. <laughs> Matt's a straight ripper. I heard the turbo and I just giggling under my helmet. <laughs> Look at that. I look like a pro. Dude, I love that thing. <laughs> All right, we're going to the 
bot or the top of the second inning, we, we're going to have Hoff up with Galliana and Danner following her. Box Elder was very fortunate to get out of that first inning. Bountiful had runners on the corners with just one out, and Box Elder was able to escape. Score 0-0 zero, zero after one. Pitch coming, looks good. Called ball. A little outside on that one. You got a better angle at that inside that uh, trailer than I do. Hit hard, but it's gonna be foul, I believe, yep. So count one and one. I'm a little bit blocked by some fans standing along the fence. Hoff is the shortstop for the Red Hawks. Pitch down low in the dirt. Had the line on it. Count two and one. Pitch hit high. It's going to be called by one of several. The center fielder gets it and drops it, so that'll be she'll be on by an error. E eight and uh, Hoff will be on first base nobody out that'll bring up uh, number seven the left fielder galliana seems like it, the center fielder shortstop or second could have gotten to that the center fielder probably had to travel the best most distance but it's easier to come in on a ball than anything else so take your pick on that called strike All right, count 0-1 to Galliana. Got Hoff over at first base. Squares around the bunt. She gets it, it's fair. Catcher goes on over to first for the out. Tries to get the runner, sneak it off second, but she's safe in time there. So we have one out as we went. Catcher to second baseman covering for the bunt. All right, this will bring up Danner. Danner's the right fielder for the Red Hawks. I'm happy to be joined by Norm Allen. Norm had a few daughters uh, win a state championship with the Bees. Was it three, Norm? Three state championships and one also played. Four daughters played here. That one's hit deep to left field and blocked, and it gets over her head. So that's going to bring in one run, and she'll be standing up for a double. So Hoff comes around to score as Danner gets a double, and that'll bring up uh, Burns, who is the center fielder. The bees uh, joining out there at the mound to kind of collect themselves. So Norm, you, you've been around this game a lot with all the daughters playing. Box Elder struggled. You weren't here during the first inning. You came late. Box, Bountiful had runners on the corner, one out, and they didn't get anybody in. I, I saw some of that. Yeah, that looks like they were kicking the ball around a little bit. But I, what I did see is that uh, pitcher for Bountiful, she's bringing some heat. She's one of the league lead, or state leaders in strikeouts. I just, I just heard that she's verbally committed to UVU. Uh, she's just a junior, so she can't commit yet, but um, yeah, the bees are not going to have any success if they don't lay off her rice ball. But it's not out of, 
out of reach yet. No, both teams average about 11 runs per game. That's one strike. The scoreboard had two up there, and I'm thinking, I don't think I missed a pitch. But, so count 0-1. Hit hard over to third. She bobbles it, but she gets it there in time. So no harm, no foul. As we go third to first for the second out. The box would be fortunate to get out of here with just giving up one run. Yeah, the bees are playing kind of nervous. That, every, that's a nervous every, play right there, isn't it? Defensive play I've seen, they've, they've bobbled the ball a little bit. They've, they've made the plays, but they haven't been clean. So after that double that scored Hoff, everybody collects. Uh, what are they saying? Are they just trying to settle the pitcher down, or is it collectively? Well, or yeah, the whole the whole team just uh, you know, talk to each other. And so that's uh, that J C Alvey that just grounded a second uh, for the out at first. She was uh, she's a daughter of of my oldest daughter's former teammate at Dixie. Oh, wow. We were just talking to her. <laughs> Tana Alvey was one of our, one of my my daughter Ashley's teammates at Dixie College, and and uh, her daughter plays at Bountiful. She's going down to uh, Southern Nevada to play next fall. She's That's awesome. Well, with that ground out and the third out, uh, they had one run. There was one error, one runner left on base, and Bountiful leads one to nothing, and Box Hutter is really fortunate to have it be 1-0. So we're going to go to an ad real quick, and we'll be back with you for the bottom half of the second inning. Oh. The following was performed by everyday writers like you. Please try it home. <laughs> Matt's a straight ripper. I heard the turbo and I was just giggling under my helmet. <laughs> look at that. I look like a pro. Dude, I love that yeah. thing. <laughs> We've been in business here at Gillis Funeral Chapel for the last 18 years. We do aftercare, that's where Melanie Christie will go in and meet with the family after the services have been completed and she'll help them with social security, help them file for life insurance, help them with federal government employee work. We go through credit cards, we, do, we help the family with all that transition that's coming out. All right, B starting off with Blackmer, the designated player up to bat, ball low. Count one and all. Following Blackmer will be the pitcher Malin and then Pritchard, who plays third. Hard hit out to right center it's and it's drop. gonna drop. Well, that's a good sign, Norm. First, first hit of the bees for the day. After a string of three strikeouts, you, you, you kind of go back to the dugout with your tail between your legs when you get when you strike out the yeah. side or when you get struck out on the side. If you're the pitcher, you're going up there with your chest all puffed up. <laughs> so this will bring up uh, Malin. Called strike on over to first, not in time. How difficult, you're a baseball fan as well, Norm. How difficult is it to steal in softball versus baseball? Uh, Bases are it, closer, but. I mean, it, it is a speed game and there's, there's a lot of stealing. Um, it's also a, just like they're doing here, a bunt and run game, try to, try to force an error. You know, worst case, you move the runner to second and got a chance to score with a hit. But that was a, a well-executed sacrifice bunt. Yep, sacrifice bunt moves Blackmer over to second. And Pritchard comes up. Pritchard has seven RBIs on the year. She does have a couple of doubles and a couple of home runs. There's 
that rise ball again, swung under it. Swing and a miss. So, so what do you do there? Do you lay off them? Yeah, do you? You got to lay off. Is that. it generally going to go high? Yeah, those those are they're swinging at balls. But it it looks good coming in. It's hard to lay off of. And Another one. Again, she's way under that. So count zero and two. She was ahead of the count in each of the three batters in that first inning. Yeah. And it's so much easier to pitch when you're ahead in the count. Yep, that's, there's no better pitch than strike one in softball. Swing and a miss. It's, it, it was three identical pitches. Yep, yep. That'll bring up Richards, number double zero. She is the, the catcher. Richards has four RBIs on the year. She does have a home run. She took that pitch for a strike. Count 0-1. Once again, she's ahead on the count. Yep. Following Richards, if she can get on, will be Hales. Swing and a miss, that riser you've yeah. been talking about. Yeah, a weak swing at that. She didn't want to. She didn't want to swing, but she couldn't lay off. So let me ask you this: I mean, you could go up to bat and be really timid and not swing at anything. Is this something that, as the as the innings go on, they're going to be able to solve? Well, you hope so. I mean, um, runner takes so second or third on that pass ball. Those, those pitches they've been. They've been striking out on have been out of the strike zone. So if they can lay off of those, get better pitches to hit. Sometimes you have to be aggressive early in the count. They'll try to get a strike on you early and then go to that rise ball to get you to chase it. That's another one. So she gets another strikeout. That, that's number five strikeouts in just two innings. Yep. That's uh, quite a display of pitching. So the bees do get a hit, they leave one on, no, no runs. So at the end of two, Bountiful leads one to nothing and we'll be right back. What if you really could have it all? At Exit Realty, we believe, we believe the home you, you want, want is right there. Right there. And we'll help you find it. You can count on us. And you thought we just sold real estate. We, we are, are Exit Realty. Realty. Think smart, think, think exit. exit. Contact Stephanie Dixon, your Exit Realty Advantage agent at 801-710-5542. Again, Stephanie Dixon for all of your real estate needs. We've been in business here at Gillis Funeral Chapel for the last 18 years. Um, we purchased the mortuary, the funeral chapel in 2001. My wife Lori and I have always felt that family is important and when you have a family owned funeral home, you get personal um, attention than you do than the big corporate funeral homes that are in the area. But we like to go one step further ahead. All right, the beginning of the top of the third, Bountiful leads one to nothing, but I, I'll tell you what, Box Elder's fortunate it's not about four to nothing. Yeah, they they got out of one in the first inning. They had they had some problems and got the balls hit right at them that got them out of the inning. All right, so that brings up Yates starting off the inning. The, her first at bat, uh, she hit it over to third for an unassisted play at first, or first for an unassisted play for the out. How do the fielders field when a lefty's up to bat as opposed to a righty? Is there so, any difference? So, well, it depends on if they're, a, if they're a true lefty or whether they're a lefty slapper. So this, this girl's just hitting away left-handed. 
It's going to get over right fielder's head. Yeah. She was playing up, way up, She's and it rolls to the fence. She's going to go to third. She's going to be safe for a triple. She almost got tagged out celebrating there. She jumped up, <laughs> jumped up, <laughs> shaking her fist, and almost got tagged out. All right, so that'll bring up Turpin. Turpin got a single last time, was stranded at the end of the inning. But yeah, you were talking about, about lefties. They played this girl like she was a slapper. They played her shallow and she burned them, hit it, hit it hard. So the coach comes out to talk to the, to the pitcher just to settle him down or actually talk to the umpire. He's, maybe he's wondering what you were thinking. Is that Yeah, I, I think she might've had the ball on her when she jumped up in the air. So the umpire's not going to change his call. No. I don't, What's I don't the benefit so. of the coach coming out here? Well, you I just try to get in the umpire's head and try to get get a call going your way. Sometimes it sometimes it gives a team a chance to settle down, stops play for a minute. Well, and that was my thought there. As opposed, to he didn't go out and talk to the pitcher. So is it like baseball? And I'm going to, you know, show my ignorance here. In baseball, if the if the coach comes out a second time, you got to replace the pitch, right? Well, I don't know the new rules in softball. We, <laughs> okay. did, we didn't we didn't play with that rule. Um, once the pitcher comes out, she can only re-enter once. She can't she can re-enter, but I, as far as visits to the mound and pulling her out, I don't know what that rule is. Okay. That first pitch was a called strike. Ball really high. That didn't even tempt her. No. Hit hard to oh. second. Oh, she almost got it. That's going to bring in a run. She'll get a single yeah. on that. Her second single of the day. Yeah. Line drive to second base. Second looks like the second baseman could have had it, but just just got past her. And we got a timeout as the coach comes out to talk to the pitcher. We'll take this timeout here real quick, and we'll be back with you. We've been in business here at Gillis Funeral Chapel for the last 18 years. My wife Lori and I have always felt that family is important and when you have a family owned funeral home you get personal um, attention than you do than the big corporate funeral homes that are in the area. A lot of funeral homes will just say here's your bag and thank you for letting us do your services but we like to go one step further ahead. All right, we're back with you. Uh, one run in, runner on first with nobody out. Box under needs to just settle down and start playing. Both teams average about 11 runs per game, so Box Utter's not out of this by any means. Squares showing bunt. Takes the ball high. The Red Sox are they're putting the bat on the ball. They're putting it in play and making the bees make the play. And so far the bees haven't made crisp plays. I don't think somebody with a couple of doubles and three home runs is gonna square around the bun, is she Norm? No. That's <laughs> a that's a, a timing move in softball. They'll they'll square around and then they'll pull back and swing away. It's kinda like an open stance in baseball, but they they, they put them, it's just a, a habit some batters get into. See, she's pulling back plenty early to hit that ball hard. But sometimes they'll square around like that and then try to punch it past an infielder just with a half swing. When, when she squares around, though, I don't see the third baseman or the first one no, they're taking not, a step. No, they're not coming in. They know she's going to hit it hit away. Hit hard just over second. Just yep, little looping yeah, inches line over. Drive. And uh, Turpin's going to stay at second as uh, 
Athena gets a single. That's three singles or three hits in a row. So Box Elder needs to get an out in a, in a big way, and that'll bring up Miller, the pitcher. She grounded out to short her first time up for the third out in the first inning. They put in number six, Amy Moore, as a speed up runner for the catcher, Athena. Which is important here because that might eliminate a double play possibility. Yep. Well, it fell straight back for strike one. They always say this is a chance for the pitcher to help themselves and drive in a run, get a bigger lead. Yeah. I any hit outside the infield should bring in Turpin. Unless it's really hard hit to the one of the fielders and they can get it back quickly. Well, she squares the bunt that takes high. <clears throat> now in this situation, a bunt puts runners at second and third with one out. That That's not a bad play. No. No, then you can score on a sacrifice fly or infield hit a lot of a lot of ways. Takes a double play out. Looks like it was just outside. Two balls and a strike. Once again, nobody out. Red Hawks up 2-0, but it seems like a lot more. <laughs> second base haven't really threatened in the game. No, she hit that hard but pulled it foul. A little early on that one. So how different is pitching in softball versus baseball? Baseball you got the fastball, you got the change up, you got the slider and curve. Well you throw a lot of the same pitches but but in in uh, softball, you throw the rise ball, which which the power pitchers all throw, and that's um, that's what this Red Sox pitcher throws. It's up to bat right now. She throws a good rise ball. All right, so now we have the the count is full. Runners on first and second. Uh, we'll see if we see if the coach sends them here. Stealing signs out there on second base. Not heading over, goes to third, force out there, oh, on over to first play. for a double play, and the runner stays at second, or advances to second. So we got uh, unassisted play there for the third baseman for the first out, on over to, to first for the second. That couldn't have been scripted any better for the Bees. Yep, yep. That's Bees couldn't have drawn it up any better. That's and quite honestly, Norm, if they were running, I don't know that the result of that play would have been any different. No, it was hit too hard right to the third baseman. They wouldn't have made a difference. This brings up Hoff. She got on in the second inning when the center fielder coming in hard wasn't able to secure that, that fly ball. That's one where it went in between the, the short second and center field. That's a tough one. Yeah, they always say the center fielder is supposed to take charge, but on that one, I thought the infielder should have called her off and made the catch. It it, it landed on the dirt. There's another pop up. Another pop up. And the short stops out. Right. Makes the play. Fly out to six for the third out, and so Bountiful has three run or three hits. Ended up with just one run and a runner left on base. So we'll go to the bottom of the third, Bountiful up 2-0, and Box Elder is somewhat fortunate to have that be the case. No matter what generation you're from, when you hear Hanson Motor Company, we hope you consider buying a car from us. I'm Matt Hanson. My grandpa KV started Hanson Motor Company with a customer first philosophy. I know that he'd be proud as we have hundreds of five-star reviews as we continue to put our customers first. Earning Hanson Motors another Dealer of the Year award in customer satisfaction. Come and experience the family difference at Hanson Motors.
The following was performed by everyday riders like you. Please try it home. <laughs> Matt's a straight ripper. I heard the turbo and I was just giggling under my helmet. <laughs> look at that. I look like a pro. Dude, I love that thing. <laughs> All right, leading off for the bees in the bottom of the third is Hales, followed by Marble, and then back to the top of the order with Hall. Bees need to get some bats going, and we'll see if they can lay off that rise ball. Got a piece of it, but came with the rise ball on the first pitch. That's confidence. That looked good, and it was. Right down the middle. That's the, That would have been the pitch to hit. Count 0 and 2. That must have been just outside. And once again, she's ahead of the head on the count. Yep. Puts a lot of pressure on the batter. Trying to shorten her swing up a little bit, squaring around. Trying to time the, time the pitch. Another rise ball, but she got a piece of it to foul it back. Is she swinging just a bit late? She was a little bit late on that, but she was under it also. Just a piece of it. Jammed her a little bit on that one. Was able to fight it off and foul it back. Stand alive, count one and two. The wind's picking up a bit. And she gets a it. solid single over the over the second baseman's head. All right, so the bees get the lead lead batter on, and uh, that'll bring up Marble. Marble is the left fielder for the bees, number 23. Yeah, she's the she's the little sister of my youngest daughter, so I've I've known her since she was about three years old. She uh, she decided that her name was going to be Charlie. She told everybody, <laughs> my name's Charlie, and so everybody calls her Charlie to to this day. She bunts. It's going to go foul. Bunts it down the first baseline foul. So once again, Miller's ahead on the count, 0-1. Hall coming up, she's on deck. If we can't get a whole lot of hits, we gotta manufacture some runs somehow. Yeah, if they get a run here, they're right back in business. Way high on pulled, that one. Pulled back in time, so count one and one. Catcher. Good play there by Athena to pop it up. That was not a, you, you know, you have to throw that mask yeah. on, you have to locate the ball. Yeah, it didn't go very high, and she was able to get back there and get it. So that's the first out. She fouls out to the catcher. That'll bring up Hall. Now, in, in Hall's first at bat, she did strike out, but the count was two and two forever. She had like five foul balls with the count at two and two. Yeah, so her, she's the She's the granddaughter of a former box elder coach, Leon Hashimoto. 
and the and the daughter of a former state champion and all state player at box elder lisa hashimoto and did she not go on to play college ball to you went on to play at the u she went to the real school had a great year at the u of u all right so the count zero and one another foul ball I, I, you know she's probably fouled off about six or seven because i think even the, the two strikes that she got were fouls i don't think she missed until the strikeout <laughs> following hall is check it's Pitch comes in the changeup and bounces it up there. A changeup that I don't know. Did she just release it too early, or does it slip out of her hand? I yeah, probably just released it early. But um, that can be that can be a devastating pitch if you rise balls on and then you throw that changeup for a strike. But usually you don't have to throw it for a strike. It'll look the same as a rise ball, and it'll, then it'll bounce up there. Fouled back again. <clears throat> so once again, count one and two. And another strikeout. Chase that rice ball. Yeah, it's out number two. Now check it's coming up to bat now, number five. Jackets has 10 RBIs on the year. She does have one home run. Umpire called an illegal pitch for some reason, so it's ball one. You don't know the reason, huh? I didn't. I wasn't watching her very close, but uh, it's, it's going to be caught by the left fielder for the third out. So Box Elder gets the first batter on, but isn't able to take advantage of it. Uh, out number three. So at the end of three, Box Elder's down two to zero. But I feel like it might be getting a little better. That inning was better at the bat. Each inning has gotten progressively better. Yeah, they're they're getting a, they're getting a look at her second time through, laying off that high pitch a little better. Now, in, in baseball, and I, I apologize for the listeners, but but I suppose many of them maybe know baseball as as I do, you know. Um, and don't know softball as well. In baseball, I know even in high school, there's a pitch count. Um, I don't believe that there, there the, is no pitch the, count in softball. Um, how hard is it for a pitcher to go seven? It's not hard to go seven. Um, you know, when these pitchers play in the summer, they'll they'll pitch 15, 20 innings in a in a day. High, high school is a little bit of an adjustment for a lot of these kids that play travel ball because they, they, uh, you know, play game after game all in a, on a Friday and Saturday and, and uh, high school they come in they play one seven inning game and, you know, that's that's when they're starting to get warmed up in a, in a travel <laughs> ball tournament. All right, number seven, Galliana. She, the, uh, the catchers actually have more arm problems in softball than the pitchers do. Because interesting. Throwing it overhand back to the pitcher. You see more rotator cuff problems with the catchers than, than the pitcher. Galliana. Got out in her first at bat to catch her to first. Or I, well, it was catcher to the second baseman at the first base <laughs> off of a bunt. 
called strike there. So now we got it going on the pitching uh, count 0 and 2. Yeah, the bees really need a three up, three down right here to get them back, back hitting. And they got, they got the first one. Strike and that's the on. first strike out of the game for the bees. So, oh, and the, our strikeouts are brought to you by Frank Mace Cadu. Thanks, Frank, for your sponsorship and. If anybody knows Frank, reach out to him, tell him thanks. All right, so now we have Danner up. She got a, a double in the second inning. She was stranded out there at second. Now that's going to be a called strike. Change up, she gets on top of it, an easy roller to third base. All right, so out number two, that'll bring up Burns. Burns grounded out to third her first time up. And my quick look, it looks like we have four ground balls from third to first. doesn't appear to be a power hitter. Four RBIs and a double on the year. Bounces the first one up there for a ball. Pretty decent crowd here for the bees. We got some in the bleachers here. We got some out in right field, some out in left. Called strike. Probably Count. even a few sitting in their cars watching, even though it is a warm day. It is a beautiful day. A little bit breezy, but it beats last year. <laughs> out over to the dugout, strike two. Spring sports in high school are always a, a dicey deal with the weather. You've probably sat through a lot of very cold softball games. Oh. We, we uh, thought we were going to get snowed out down at Snow College, and uh, we just covered up with a blue tarp and let it snow, and the, the field the field got snowed on, and they, they plowed the infield and went back to playing. <laughs> Hit up. Right over the second baseman out to center, and she's going to be on with the single. We're back up to the top of the order for Alvy. Solid single for for Burns. Alvy's one, one and one of two on the day. Runner takes off. She's going to be stay safe with a stolen base. Steals it easily. Alvy swings through to distract the catcher. So the good part there is we're ahead in the count with two outs. How much of this does the pitcher just not worry about the runner and just focus on the batter? Well, the pitcher really can't do anything with the runner. Yeah, you can't pick them off. Softball because yeah. they have to stay on the base until the ball leaves their hand. But mentally. I, I would imagine it could play with them. It, it can, and that's that's you know something the the good pitchers do is just uh, forget about who's on base and face the batter. Alvy's uh, Alvy's the daughter of one of my oldest daughter's teammates at Dixie State. Looks just like her mom, tall, skinny, left-handed slapper. And she just punches the ball out to left, left. field a little too hard. Line, lines it out to the left fielder. So a fly out to left, ends the inning. They get a hit. No runs, one runner left on base. And after three and a half, so we're halfway done. 
Bountiful leads 2-0. What does Box Elder need to do to turn this thing around? They just got to they got to get the ball in play. Too many strikeouts. They got to they got to force some mistakes by the Red Hawks and and uh, get some runners in scoring position and and they'll be all right. They're they're well within reach still. So to your point, there's been nine outs in the three innings. Six of them have been strikeouts. Yeah, yeah, you can't you can't win with that many strikeouts. You gotta you gotta force the defense to play defense or, or else or make errors. So leading off this inning for the bees is gonna be Baker followed by Blackmer and Malin. And Blacker, the second one up, is one of the two hits for the Bees tonight. Problem for Bountiful is I was looking back at the, the scorecard that I've got. They've had five runners left on. Yep. Yeah, they're leaving too many runners on base. That's that's their mistake so far. They've they've got them on, and, and the bees have made some errors. But the bees have tightened up their defense when they've needed to and kept the score in check. All right, count uh, two and one, I think. The scoreboard doesn't have there. The, no, it's one and two. Fouled back. Right up to it. Okay. All right, this count remains one and two. Nobody out, nobody on. Red Hawks up 2-0, but the bees seem to be settling down just a little bit. A swing and a miss for the seventh strikeout. Swung under another one. You sound like a broken record, Norm. So as a coach, That's and you've coached your daughters, what do you tell them? Can you fix it mid-game? Well, have, have, have you seen the movie um, A League of Their Own? Uh-huh. And, and Kip, the younger daughter, keeps... Okay, uh-huh. Uh, uh, Kip keeps swinging at the high one. Her sister's always telling her, lay off the high one, because I like the high ones. <laughs> That's what we Is that got Gina going Davis that played the Gina, older sister? Gina Davis, yep. Yep, the bees like the high one, but they can't catch up to this high one is the problem. That was that one back count, 0 and 2. Once again, she's ahead in the count. That's uh, been a regular thing today. Yeah, she got a good swing at it, but she just can't get on top of it. So they always be <clears throat> below it? Yeah, yeah. So is it a matter of laying off the high ones, or is there something they can adjust to be able to connect a little better? You really got to lay off of it. If you got to force it to be in the strike zone. If, if, uh, you know, if it's up up with the numbers, they can't they can't hit that uh, with any authority. All right, that one went way high. So one ball, two strikes. There comes oh. a changeup hitter. She gets on hitter by a for... hit by pitch. Hey, what? However, you need to do. You mentioned it before. Yep. You know, make her throw strikes, get on any way you can, and that's one way you can. 
I'm not sure what the umpire is. He's, he's smiling. If she's okay. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, she's okay. She's on first base. You kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> she, she'll take one but for the team got, every she, time. She got hit by a changeup. No better hit to get, <laughs> get hit by. Yeah, this this uh, Red Hawks pitcher throws pretty hard. It'll leave a mark if uh, if you threw her, her fastball and hit you, but the changeup's a one to get hit with. All right, that first pitch is a ball. At least I think they haven't got it up on the scoreboard. When my dad used, used to officiate umpire baseball, you, boy, you knew when it was a strike. He would holler it out. All right, we're full of ones. One ball, one strike, one out, one runner on. That Another one gets fire. And that one hits her in the foot. So. so that's a dead ball. So the runner in second can't go any further. Well, she she just went down to second, but. Uh, yeah, but she was forced there by the hit by pitch. Yep. But she can't advance on the on the pass ball. All right, so runners on first and second for the bees. We got one out. We got number 16 coming in as a speed up runner. Uh, Kylie Palmer is going to run for the the catcher and once again that's important because she's on first that hopefully that can eliminate a double play we've also got somebody come in and to run at second Sorry number for the, eight for the, for the pitcher number eight Maybe. coming in for blackmer number eight is mcclee Mac willard so what is the rule on when you come in and, and pinch run so if you're running for the pitcher and catcher, it's called a speed up runner and, and they can and you can do that all game. Whenever the pitcher gets on, the same person has to run for the pitcher, same person has to run for the catcher. Okay. And and they can do that all game. If the pitcher gets on four times, they can run for her four times. If they just come in and pinch run, that counts as a substitution. So they have to now take that player back out and the and the original batter can re-enter the game one time if they take her back in, in the same pitch, order or any order in the same order she's got to come in, in the same spot she was in for the same player if if they pinch run for her a second time she's now out of the game and cannot play again okay but count Owen two, one strike or one out for Pritchard oh and she swings on another high one clear up at her eyes Second strike out of this inning. That brings up Richards, who struck out in the second inning for the third out. So, and, and she didn't have even one ball thrown to her, or at least she didn't lay off one ball. Yeah, three, three pitches. We, we got to get a run or two in this inning. This is set up too good for us. Yeah, you got to, like I said, you got to take advantage of those mistakes and, and two, two free runners on hit by pitches. There's one right down the middle for a strike. That's the one she should have swung at. Oftentimes you'll have baseball players take the first pitch just to settle their nerves. Does that happen quite a bit in softball? Yeah, it, it varies player to player. You know, some some uh, some take every first pitch. You can't you can't force them to take a, an early pitch. Some, some of them won't, won't swing until there's two strikes. Every, everybody has their own style. But, you know, with a pitcher like this, she throws one flat on the first pitch, you gotta go after it. That was a good job of laying off that high one. Bit high, so now the, the batter's, uh, the count is in her favor. Yep, yep. Count two and one. Two out, two, player, two runners on. Ball three. Yeah, she's uh, she's being pitched to a little bit different this time. She's not chasing the high pitch, and the pitcher's uh, is uh, throwing a little bit different. And we got a timeout here by the coach. Let me ask you here. <clears throat> well, let's Hales. If Richards can get on, Hales is coming up, and she got a single her first time. In fact, yeah, she hit it hit it square. So 
So if, if yeah, somehow she can get on. Right here. Yeah. Now, you would think with the two speed up runners, you know, I anything into the outfield should at least score one. Anything into the gaps would score two. Yep. Yeah, that's what you hope for if you're a Bees fan. Something in the gap here. And the, the count well in the in the batter's favor. But what she's got to do is make sure she gets a strike to hit. And it looks like she, she thought about that first strikeout. She's laying off the high pitch this time. That's going to be uh, a bit high. Point. That's going to load the bases. Yeah, she laid off that high pitch to load the bases. It looks like we're going to run for her as well. She's the catcher, so we're, we're going to have a speed up runner here. Number 19. I can't see it yet. Lacey Griffin. Is it Le Lucy Griffin. I can't, it's in front of you. Oh, both of our eyes are old, Norm. <laughs> it is number 19, Lucy Griffin. And we have Hales up to bat. With only one out now. No, there's two oh, outs. Oh, there's been two right, strikeouts. Right. That two, ball's two high. Outs. So beautiful thing if you're, uh, uh, you know, if the count is in your favor with bases loaded. Yeah, a walk here would be great, wouldn't it? Another ball she, high. She, the pitchers, <coughs> pitchers counting on them, chasing that high pitch like they've been doing the whole game, and they're they're wising up and not not going after it. So she's behind in the count. She's got to throw a strike here. At this point, I you know after two hit batters and and a uh, and a walk, you might want to lay off that one, but she didn't. It was a good pitch to hit, but she just got a piece of it, fouled, fouled back. I was thinking where she's had a little bit of trouble with some control, you lay off that one. But it's also one that you, you probably figure is going to be right down the pipe. Here comes the pitch. Another high one. All three. Count three and one. So is this one where you... you you, you pick your pitch, and if it's there, you swing. If, yep, it's, if yep. you guess wrong, you don't. Yeah. This is, this is obviously a hitter's pitch, and if it's right where you want it, hit it. If it's, uh, if it's out of the strike zone, you got to take it for ball four. Take a good pitch. So right, at, right at the knees for a strike. All right. Count uh, is full. full. Runners will be going here full count, two outs. So we could we could score three on a on a long single here. The runner coming in from third just needs to make sure she's outside the line. You don't want to get hit with the ball inside the line. No. Nope. It's fouled off. Yeah, staying alive. We mentioned how Box Elder was fortunate to get out of a couple innings where Bountiful looked like they were going to do some damage. Bountiful is in the same situation here. Yep. If they could get out of this inning without giving up any runs, yeah, that would be huge for them. It would. Oh, what a swing and a miss. Struck out. Struck so, out to end the threat. So she got three strikeouts in that inning. So nine strikeouts out of 12 outs. And, and that... Uh, we we gotta change that, but you you feel like maybe the momentum is switching a little bit, but Bountiful solidly in charge, uh, up to zero and. Uh, yeah, it would have been a real momentum shift if we could have got a hit right there, but. But we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back with you. No matter what generation you're from, when you hear Hanson Motor Company, we hope you consider buying a car from us. I'm Matt Hanson. My grandpa KV started Hanson Motor Company with a customer first philosophy. I know that he'd be proud as we have hundreds of five star reviews as we continue to put our customers first. Earning Hanson Motors another Dealer of the Year award in customer satisfaction. Come in and experience the family difference at Hanson Motors.
All right, we're going to go top of five now. Uh, Bountiful up 2-0. Starting off with Yates, Turpin, and uh, Athena. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll refrain from butchering her last name. Tongao Nevi. <laughs> or something like that. that ball's called a strike. We still have Malin out on the mound for the bees. Yates puts one right up through the middle. She's had a good day. She's the one that got the triple, came around to score in the third inning. Yeah, she's a, she's a true left-handed hitter. And, uh, first time. I didn't First notice. I they, didn't know if the right fielder was playing up on her this time. I doubt it. They they weren't, <laughs> and uh, she she still hit it solid. Just hit a line drive up the middle. So this brings up Turpin. Turpin got a single her last time up, and in the first time up, she got a single as well. So she's two for two. Well, she really gets that bat moving. She swings. Yeah. Throw down a stolen is stolen base attempt. She's Swings through to distract the catcher. All right, stolen base for Yates. She's now at second base. Count, uh, well, they put up a ball up there, but I'm pretty sure she swung she's, around. She swung at it, yeah. Takes away the conventional double play, although we've seen a third to first double play today. Although she's not four, so I doubt if she'd be going. Ball outside, count one and one. Yeah, much harder to make a tag and then throw to first. Yeah, the runner on second, just her, her goal is to make him look at her and distract him. Oh, hi, she's really getting the lead off of that, that second base out there. It's a tough decision for a catcher when they see him off that far. Do you throw to third? Do you throw to second? Well, she's getting that big lead because the second baseman, the shortstopper, are way off the bag as well. So there's nobody to throw to. Teams, so teams will run a play where they sneak the center fielder in like that, yeah. and they'll 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 throw a pitch out so the batter can't hit it and burn the center fielder, and the center fielder will come in behind the, the runner and make the play. It's a dangerous play because there's nobody to back up the throw. And a strikeout to Turpin. That's one out. That'll bring up uh, the catcher, Athena. Athena's. And Athena's, uh, her first at bat, she popped up to, to short and then she got a single, was stranded at second in the third inning. Nice change up there, strike one. God, strike Athena was was nodding her head like, yeah, that was, as a catcher, she knows how good, good of a pitch that was. And another strike. Ball's behind 0-2. You know, that's a pretty good pitch. Just close enough yep. to maybe hope they chase it. So count one and two. One out, one runner on second. Red Hawks up 2-0. Oh. Um, catcher lets it get out of her hands, out of her mitt. And runner takes third on that pass ball. So w are we late enough in the in the game? Do the third base and first base 
scoot up so they can go come home with the ball on a ground ball or still too early? Well, in a, in a, in a close game like this, that could make the difference. Um, Does my it, question make sense? The, the, not first and third, more, more uh, second and okay. short would have to come in. If, the, if it's hit to first or third, usually they can hold the runner there no matter what depth they are. But if it's hit, you know, deep to the shortstop, that runner's going to score from, from uh, third base. So, but it doesn't look like the bees are bringing, it, bringing her in. They're, uh, that, you know, the, the downside to that is, is it shortens up the, the field so it makes it easier for the, for the batter to get the ball through. Pops it up to first base. He's under it, makes the play, and the runner retreats to third for the second out. Uh, that'll bring up Miller. Miller grounded out to short, then grounded out to third. So hope we can replicate that. Just a bit low. A little bit high and outside on that one. Two balls and no strikes. Pitcher still can't give in to this batter. It's better to give her a give her first base than to let her drive in this runner on third. A good pitch that catches the outside corner. If Miller gets on, we got Hoff coming up who uh, she got on by an error by the center fielder and then grounded or flew out to or popped up to third base the next one. So we've got a couple of batters here who haven't had a lot of batting success today. That one's way high. Yeah, I think they're, this is kind of the unintentional, intentional walk. They're not giving her anything to hit. And she takes her base, so now runners on the corners. Mentioned Hoff uh, had that kind of pop up right over second base that was the air on the center fielder that first time up and, and then popped it up to, to shortstop the next inning. So just need to settle down and get this get this batter. Are they bringing in a speed runner at all? It's yep, here comes the speed up runner for the pitcher, number nine, McKinley Duria. I probably mistakenly said that Hoff hasn't had a lot of success. I, I mean, she's 0 for 2. She did get on and came around to score for the first run for the Red Hawks. So I guess that's a successful day if you come around to score. Yeah, that looked good. A 2 to nothing game. It runs, it runs pretty big. But she hasn't hit the ball hard. No, she hasn't gone deep in the count either on either of her two at bats. Another pop-up. Should Left be left, left fielder. fielder's coming in and fouls the ground, makes the catch. All right. Fly out to left for the third out. Bees hold them again. So one hit, uh, no runs, two left on. We're going to be right back for the bottom of the fifth.
following was performed by everyday riders like you. Please try it home. <laughs> Matt's a straight ripper. I heard the turbo and I was just giggling under my helmet. <laughs> look at that. I look like a pro. Dude, I love that thing. <laughs> No matter what generation you're from, when you hear Hanson Motor Company, we hope you'd consider buying a car from us. I'm Matt Hanson. My grandpa KV started Hanson Motor Company with a customer first philosophy. I know that he'd be proud as we have hundreds of five star reviews as we continue to put our customers first. Earning Hanson Motors another Dealer of the Year award in customer satisfaction. Come in and experience the family difference at Hanson Motors. We've been in business here at Gillis Funeral Chapel for the last 18 years. Um, we purchased the mortuary, the funeral chapel, in 2001. My wife Lori and I have always felt that family is important, and when you have a family-owned funeral home, you get personal um, attention than you do than the big corporate funeral homes that are in the area. But we like to go one step Number 23, Charlie Marbles up to bat. Takes ball one. Count to an all. Now, Charlie's the one that popped up to the catcher. It was a good play by the catcher. Yeah. Let's see if she can get something started for the bees here. Miller's starting to have last inning and now the first bout of this inning. He's starting to have some control problems. Yeah, yeah. Three and all here. That'd be a great, great start for the bees to get a walk. Right down the middle. They may get it, but not on that pitch. She takes that for strike one. Ball four. Ball four. Lead off runners aboard. And we're back up to the top of the order with Hall. Hall has struck out twice. I know she, she travels out of state quite a bit, so she's seen tougher pitchers than this. I'm, I'm surprised she's uh, struggled so far. Puts a bunt down. She is fast. She's uh, one of those uh, lefty slappers that can really fly down the line. Watched her mother run a double steal at, at the U one time. Um, runner on third, runner on first. I think uh, I think Lisa was the trail runner. She took off for second. The runner takes off for, from third, scores. Throw goes down, comes back to catch her. Lisa never slowed down all the way around the third. <laughs> all right, count one and one to Hall. You know, the lefties that slap it, like you say, it, it's almost like they're halfway down to first on about four steps. Oh. oh. Wow, what a catch. Bunted, bunted a pop up and third baseman dives in for the catch. So that keeps Marble at first. Yeah, Hall's having a tough day. If Turpin doesn't get that, uh, that's uh, trouble. Yeah, yeah, it's, could, it's, nobody on third base. We could have the runners on first and third. That's there. what I was thinking. I wasn't paying attention to the shortstop, but if she wasn't covering, it would have been first and third. Ball high. This is check. It's up to bat for the bees. She has struck out and popped out to first. A 
anxious on that one right down the middle, but she pulls a foul over the over the visiting dugout. Well, she should get anxious. A, a lot of them haven't been right down the middle for them. <laughs> one and one. Swing and a miss. Fakes the throw down to first. We haven't seen Box Elder really attempt. I don't think we've seen him steal a base yet today. No, we haven't. I think Bountiful has gotten a couple. High for a ball. Count two and two. Following check, it's his Baker who has a couple of strikeouts on the day, so she'd sure like to turn that around. Almost all the bees have a couple of strikeouts yeah. today. Another ball up and out. She lays off of and go to full count. Full count. Do, do you think uh, Marvel would be running on this? There's only one out. Yeah, probably not down two runs. If they're down okay. one run, I, I think she might be. But down two runs, that doesn't do you much good. Oh. All four. And she was running on the play, but didn't need to be. All right. Runners on first and second, one out. That brings up check uh, Baker. Of, of the Bees players, most of them probably play on some sort of a, they, a club yeah, team. Pretty pretty much anybody that, that is successful in softball needs to play in the summertime. And there's another strike. At, now, are they playing together or are they play on separate teams? Well, the, the, there's a couple of teams in this area. Um, I know some of the assistant coaches of the Bees coach a team in the summer. Um, there's probably three or four different teams that these these girls play on. All right, so Blackmer's had a, a successful day, a single. She got the first hit of the game, and then she got on by a hit by pitch. Yeah, yeah, she's one for one with a hit by pitch. So she's been one of the more successful, a little more patient. Although that that hit was she she got that on the first pitch. off the high one count two and all so once again that you know in the first few innings Miller was ahead in the, almost the count in every single case and that hasn't been the case the last couple of innings yeah her control's gone away a little bit she was she really dominated the first few innings going down the middle and safe at third and a little bobbled it and, and the runner's safe so B Blackmer gets on by what I would call a fielder's choice. Fielder's choice, but an error. I, I think I yeah, score that she, an error. Okay. But they didn't. Well, either way, it doesn't. Yeah. It goes. It, it drops her batting average either way. Yeah. <laughs> so base is loaded, two outs, and we have Malin coming up. Malin got hit by a pitch last time. She grounded out to short in her first at bat. Bees have to do some damage here, right? Swinging at the first pitch. Just got a piece of it. Yeah, this is this is this is their their big opportunity. They've only got two more innings after this one. Seven more outs. But a hit here, just a single will tie the game. Almost over the catcher there. Ball high. Another, another high pitch. Two balls and a strike. Following Black or Malin is Pritchard, who has a couple of strikeouts. Well, the bees have been much more patient. 
There's a hard hit ball right at the second base. Under the second. They get out of the inning. Quickly throws it to first for the out. All right, so the Bees uh, didn't have any hits. They got a, had a couple of walks, and then uh, the air slash fielder's choice there on the third baseman, and then uh, leave three on. That doesn't happen very often, often that you leave three on base without any hits. Yeah. So, all right, we're going to come back with you at the top of the sixth inning. Red Hawks lead 2-0. to zero. What if you really could have it all? At Exit Realty, we believe, we believe the home you, you want, want is right there. Right there. And we'll help you find it. You can count on us. And you thought we just sold real estate. We, we are Exit Realty. Realty. Think smart, think, think exit. exit. Contact Stephanie Dixon, your Exit Realty Advantage agent at 801-710-5542. Again, Stephanie Dixon for all of your real estate needs. We've been in business here at Gillis Funeral Chapel for the last 18 years. Um, we purchased the mortuary, the funeral chapel, in 2001. My wife Lori and I have always felt that family is important and when you have a family owned funeral home, you get personal um, attention than you do than the big corporate funeral homes that are in the area. But we like to go one step further ahead. All right, Bountiful's back up, top of six. Uh, number seven, Galliana takes for a ball. Galliana struck out her last at bat, and uh, she, she got an out from catcher to second, going to first. Right. Uh, this and grounds to short, bobbled, but gets it over in time for the out. And as Norm had mentioned before, everything that Box Elder was doing was kind of bobbled, but uh, we get that one 6 3 for the out, but was not fielded cleanly. So, out number one, that brings up Danner. Danner had a double in the second inning and then grounded to third in the fourth inning. So, here we are for her third at bat. And uh, she, she hit the first pitch in that first at bat. and. She had a strike and then hit it the next time. So she's only seen three pitches. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that one called strike. Takes a strike. I tried to get one of the bountiful moms to come and give me a break for a minute, but she said that she thought she might swear. And didn't <laughs> think that would work out. <laughs> Well, well, and this is on YouTube. It's there forever. She swings at a high one, pops it up back behind the backstop. So count 0 and 2. I tried to convince her that some bountiful fans might want to hear her perspective, but she she uh, she played with my daughter at Dixie, and I noticed um, the the pitching coach at Box Elders, another one of my daughter's former teammates at Dixie. Um, uh, change up the, gets the strikeout. Strikeout looking on the change up. Good change up on the outside corner. That brings up Burns. Good call by the pitching coach Tiffany Hemphill. So do do the coaches call every pitch or do they leave it up to the pitcher catcher to figure that out? At, the, at this level, they usually call every pitch. Um, All right, Burns uh, grounded to third on her first at bat and then got a single and a stolen base, but was stranded. First base umpire calls that a ball. Box Elder was hoping they, that she went around. Yeah, so a little bit about Tiffany Hemphill. Her, she, uh, she came up from California to play at Dixie and her cousin played at Box Elder, um, Amy Christensen, who's also an assistant over there. And they played together at Dixie. And then Tiffany moved up here to uh, Perry and, and uh, 
He's helping the bees coach now. That's awesome. So does that make you feel old? <laughs> More than that does. <laughs> All right, we have Malin still out on the mound. She's well, that one is in the dirt. I was gonna say she seems to have settled down a little bit. Yeah, they haven't they haven't hit the ball hard in a couple innings. Hoping to get our first three and out uh, of the game. Good. Yeah, two outs with nobody on. I'd have to take a look at back at my scorecard, but I don't think that has happened at all. Ooh. Look good. Good looking pitch he called outside. Count three and one. Following Burns, if she gets on, will be Alvy. Yeah, and it was her mom I tried to tried to get to uh, guest announce for us. Would have been a great time to have her daughter up and her announcing, yeah, right? Yeah. Hit hard to third, fielded cleanly on over to first in the dirt, oh, and it's, it's not handled. The dirt does not get dug out. She'll take second. Uh, take second on the throwing error by the third baseman. Errors are killers. That's the second error for the bees. The first one led to a run. Well, I think the announcer jinxed it, saying this would be our first time getting three up, three down. But. <laughs> So I think the question is, is when it went over there to, towards the dugout, I th they called a dead ball, and I don't think she was going to advance over to third no, anyway. But No, she'd be stuck at second either way. Doesn't, doesn't really matter. If it went in the dugout, she was going to second. Pops up. Left fielder should have it. She's under it, and she's got it. Pretty well hit, but handled by the left fielder. All right, so after uh, five and a half, Box Hitter's still down 2-0, but they've, they've been threatening as of late, so let's see if they can get something going. We're going to come up with Pritchard, Richards, and Hales in that order. We'll be back with you. We've been in business here at Gillis Funeral Chapel for the last 18 years. My wife Lori and I have always felt that family is important and when you have a family owned funeral home, you get personal um, attention than you do than the big corporate funeral homes that are in the area. A lot of funeral homes will just say, here's your bag and thank you for letting us do your services, but we like to go one step further ahead. The following was performed by everyday riders like you. Please try it home. <laughs> Matt's a straight ripper. I heard the turbo and I just giggling under my helmet. <laughs> look at that. I look like a pro. Dude, I love that thing. <laughs> All right, here we are in the bottom of six. Bees need to get something going. They only got a couple more sh chances at it. Pritchard up to bat. Ball high, and, and you've mentioned it. Back about three innings ago, you said they got to lay off the high ones, and they're starting to do that. Yeah, they are, and, and uh, she's not throwing it as effectively. I don't know if she's getting a little tired. But uh, the bees are having a little more success. There's a low strike. Bottom of the strike zone. I, I like strike. laying off that one though. That could have easily been called a ball. Yeah. That was up and she laid off of it. Ahead in the count, two balls and a strike. He's only have two hits on the day. Couple of hit by 
pitches and I think probably about three walks. That was grounded to short, fielded, nope, not fielded cleanly. That was blocked by the catcher. So, yeah, that was a gr ground grounder to shortstop. She ranged over to towards second base and fielded it cleanly. Made a low throw. It didn't bounce. So is that uh, an E3? I, I would probably give that to the to the the first baseman an E3. All right. Well, the bees got, uh, got the speed up runner for for Malin, the pitcher. Or no, for uh, got a pinch runner for Pritchard. You see a number? I did not see. Probably it. back when your daughters played, you could tell by their stature who it was. Well, I knew all the players back then. <laughs> all right, we have uh, Richards up to bat, the catcher. She got on by a walk the last time, struck out her first time. And right down the middle. Looks like maybe number 95, Quincy Lish. Squares around the bump, but pulls back. Let's count one and one. Yeah, even though the bees have only had two hits in this game, they're they're right in it. They they've had their chances. One one timely hit, and this could be tied up. Into the dirt. Count three and one, or two and one. Two and one. Wishful thinking. We'll see if I'm prophetic. Right down the middle. Strike two for two and two. Nobody out for the bees. Ooh, that looked good, and it was. Yep, right on the inside corner. Strikeout looking. All right, that brings up uh, number 14, Hales. Hales' first baseman struck out last time. She did get a single, so one of the two hits. You know, interesting that both hits box has got, it was the leadoff hitter. And we came came away with nothing. Miller's got it going now. Yeah, first pitch strike. Caught the outside corner. Get over to the dugout for Box Elder. That's when you're if the on deck hitter, you better be paying attention. Yep, they can come pretty quick over there. All right, count 0 and 2 on Hales. This is a this is a tough one. You got to lay off the high, but boy, if they're just close enough. A little bit high. The Stolen goes. base. She's Safe. in. So bees, in bees try to force the action with the stolen yeah, base. Yeah, well, and and I think you know down 2-0, you do need to force up. You had mentioned before that, I mean that run's important, but that's not the most important. But it takes away the double play here. Yeah, with only one out, that's that can be important. Up high for ball two. So now hopefully anything to the outfield might score a run. And, and Lish has to be a smart base runner. Anything grounded over to that left side, you don't want to get held up. Oh. Dead ball in the box. Two and two now.
Oh, and a strike and a miss for the second strike out of this inning. Yeah, she's not blowing them away now like she was, but she's still getting her strikeouts up there. And that's 12 on the day. All right, that, this brings up uh, Charlie Marble. Charlie got on by a base on balls the first time, or last at bat. Came around to third, but couldn't score. Takes the ball up high. We've loaded the bases up two innings in a row. And you couldn't get anything out of it. Yeah, when Charlie was about three years old, I, I hit her trike on her. And she, <laughs> she's still mad at me about that. <laughs> she still won't talk to me because I hit her trike at a ball game. She's been going to ball games her whole life, so it's only natural she's playing here for the bees. Swing and a miss, strike two. So baseball pitchers wear down over time, right? Yeah. Do softball yeah. players, I mean, you said they can kind well, of pitch about well, 15 they, innings in a day. Well, but. They, they can. They get they get tired. Um, it's it's an easier motion than a baseball pitch, and they're, they're not, you know, there's not a you know, drop third strike. She's got to throw it first to complete the out, and she does. So a 2-3 put out on the strikeout. All righty, so at the end of six, uh, we're going the last inning. Box Elder uh, down 2-0, but they've shown some life in the last three innings. Yeah, um, they got to get two on the board to keep it going. We're going to go to our last uh, timeout. We'll be back with you shortly. No matter what generation you're from, when you hear Hanson Motor Company, we hope you consider buying a car from us. I'm Matt Hansen. My grandpa KV started Hansen Motor Company with a customer first philosophy. I know that he'd be proud as we have hundreds of five star reviews as we continue to put our customers first. Earning Hansen Motors another Dealer of the Year award in customer satisfaction. Come in and experience the family difference at Hansen Motors. We've been in business here at Gillis Funeral Chapel for the last 18 years. Um, we purchased the mortuary, the funeral chapel, in 2001. My wife Lori and I have always felt that family is important, and when you have a family-owned funeral home, you get personal um, attention than you do than the big corporate funeral homes that are in the area. But we like to go one step further ahead. What if you really could have it all? At Exit Realty, we believe, we believe the home you, you want, want is right there. Right there. And we'll help you find it. You can count on us. And you thought we just sold real estate. We are Exit Realty. Think smart. Think Exit. Contact Stephanie Dixon, your Exit Realty Advantage agent at 801-710-5542. Again, Stephanie Dixon for all of your real estate needs. All right, top of seven. We got Yates, Turpin, and uh, Athena up. Red Hawks up 2-0. It's going to be a called strike. Yeah, good way to start the inning. They, they really got to shut them down here. So what have you seen from Malin pitching for the Bees as this game has gone well, on? She hasn't, she hasn't overpowered them, but she's done a good job of mixing her pitches up and, and uh, you know, creating soft contact. Got away from her. Up high for one and one. Yeah, she's probably throwing five miles an hour slower than the bountiful pitcher, but but they haven't they haven't really hit it hard. There's another pop up. Popped up. It's gonna uh, come pretty darn close to hitting us. <laughs> so count's gonna be one and two. So Yates has a single, a triple, and uh, a ground to first for her three at-bats. Two for three. That's not a bad day. No. Came around to score after getting a triple to lead off the third inning. There's another well-hit ball. That's in the gap. 
She'll so get two on it. Fielder. She's going into second, safe at second base with a double. So she's single, double, triple. She's hoping this go thing goes into extra innings so she can hit for the cycle, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think she's just going to be just fine if they can get out of the seventh inning. So now the bees, uh, once again, they need to make something happen to get out of this inning. You, you can't go down more than two. No, that leadoff double is really, really trouble. This brings up Turpin struck out last time and had a couple of singles earlier in the game, so two for three on the day. Squares the bunt. Oh, didn't need to. The ball gets away from the catcher. All right, now runner Yates, on third. Yates goes down to third. The runner on third, nobody out. That's tough to keep her from scoring. Turpin has 11 RBIs on the year, a couple of doubles. She wanted that one. But swing and a miss. <clears throat> Way outside, ball two. <laughs> That's going to yes. bring in the runner as long as he tags enough. up properly. Oh, it oh, is dropped. Drops the, drops the ball in center field. Runner stays put at first, but that's where the center fielder, you know, she needed to relax and just catch it because she wasn't going to be able to catch it and throw no, her out at home. No, there was no chance she was going to get her. That was deep enough. This is a, uh, a day that she'd rather forget with a couple of errors. A couple of errors and a couple of strikeouts, I believe. Yeah. Oh, that's well hit. That's going to go. That's, that's, and that's over here. the fence for a home run. That's way out of here. A two-run homer for for the catcher. For Athena. So they've gotten three in this inning, and uh, the Red Hawks are up 5-0. And you know, in, in softball, there's no clock, so you're never out of it per se. But uh, yeah, but. It's a tall order. Those the three runs this inning really make it tough to come back. Looked like the bees were were making runs and they had their chances. Just didn't get that timely hit or that timely bountiful mistake. And looks like we're changing pitchers here. Yeah, a tough day for the bees uh, to this point, and they were they were ranked number one in the state. Coming into today with Bountiful 3, they may flip spots after today. Yeah. So, of course, they only like do those rankings once a week. Number 15, the designated players coming into pitch, Kennedy Blackmere. So, Yates was also number 15. No, I'm looking at the wrong team here. <coughs> So is that Blackmer up yes. out there on the mound? And yep. she, she's the other strong pitcher for the Bees. She does have four wins on the year with uh, 32 strikeouts. Malin had, was four, four wins with no losses with 27 strikeouts. So those are the two uh, pitchers for the Bees that they're going to rely on yep. all year. Yep. And, and that's why, so that brings up the point that Bountiful really relies on uh, on Miller, she's four and two on the year, but 55 strikeouts. Uh, they they have uh, looks like if Turpin has a couple of wins, but they really rely on on Miller. 
more so than maybe Box Elder relies on one pitcher. Yeah. How could that come into play as you get down to the state tournament? Yeah, if you go into loser's bracket in the state tournament, okay. and, you, and you, you, you know, and if you're not having your best day, you got to win two games, it really helps to have two pitchers. Um, Box Elder's done it on on multiple occasions where they've, they've come back through the loser's bracket. Well, in, in, in fact, I mentioned that uh, in 2018, Box Elder came back. They, they lost to Bountiful and had to come back and, and beat them twice for the state championship in 2018. Count one and one to, to uh, Miller. Can one pitcher go through the whole state tournament and pitch every game? You can, and there's a lot of them that have done it. You know, the, um, but but it, it never hurts to have to. Grounded to short, fielded cleanly for the first out. Well, and, and presumably if you're one of the top three or four teams, your first game or two ought to be well, something in, you can handle. And in the state tournament, you know, you, you, you play home and away for the first two rounds. So, so if, if you're, you know, if you win your region, you'll get two home games to start the tournament and, uh, you know, on different days. And then you get down to the tournament where you finish out the, the tournament in three days. You can go through and just play one game a day and be done. But if you lose anywhere along the line, then you start playing two games a day um, down at the complex. And, and you know, good good pitchers can do, can do that. They can handle it, but... You know, if you if you're not on that day and you don't have a backup, that that's uh, that can be the end of your season. So let me ask you this: as we watch Blackmer, um, she she throws a little bit harder. It looks like. Yep. So that's something that would help Box Elder in a, in a tournament or even in mid game as you go from one pitcher, one style to another. Yeah, you know, if if we talk to the coach, I'm sure he would probably say that that. He liked the matchup um, with uh, Malin facing Bountiful. Thought thought that uh, she'd have a little more success against them, and uh, and she did. She, you know, I think her defense let her down a little bit. Yes, um, but but uh, you know they were starting to figure her out at the end of the game with that home run. All right, counts full, one out, nobody on. And pops up, probably second or short. Pops it up to the second baseman. She's got it for the out. All right, two outs, and that'll bring up Galliana. Galliana uh, has not got any hits. Grounded to <clears throat> short last time, struck out, and uh, she was one that tried to bunt, and it went catcher to second to get her out. So she's 0 for 3 on the day. Pitch high, ball one. You know, that's a good question for Coach Merrill in your post-game interview. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, you can ask him why why he went with Malin over Malin over Blackmer. Blackmer today, and uh, you know, I think he's going to say that. He, he liked that matchup better. And maybe maybe uh, she's faced them in the past and had success against them. I, I don't know. Right. No. This isn't no. fouled out. You don't you don't get a can't have can't have it both ways. She gets she gets no on an error. All righty, we're counts uh, one and two, two outs, nobody on.
swing and a miss, and that's a strikeout into the inning. So, but uh, Bountiful does all the damage, and they're up 5-0. Box Elder's got their work cut out for them. Starting out with the top of the order, and there'd be nothing more than that Hall would like is to get a hit after a, a rough day at the plate and the field. Yeah, that's a good, good spot for Box Elder to start back at the top of the order. Um, you probably heard some of that on the air. I apologize for that. No, that's fine. But uh, one of the bountiful fans is asking if if uh, if the batter got a got an RBI on that drop ball in center field. And the answer is you can't get an RBI on a on an error. You can't assume that she would have scored on a sacrifice fly. So because it, it's possible, unlikely, but it's possible if she would have caught it's it and thrown it home, she could have, she could have, have thrown, thrown her out. Thrown her out, right? So you don't, you never get an error on an RBI. I mean, an RBI on an error. All right, the bees, uh, and you know they're going to face Bountiful again, so they they want to have a good showing they here. They may face Bountiful a few more. Uh, times. Yeah, exactly. And each of the last two years, they've split, um, I believe. And uh, so you want to keep your head up. And like I said, unlike basketball, football, you get down to a certain point, you just know you're not going to come back. You can't. It's just the time constraints. Softball's not like that. Called yeah, strike. We, we mentioned earlier that Hall's had a tough day today, but you know she could come up with a hit here and, and uh, start things off, and the bees could get on a roll. Foul tip. Uh, strike yeah, down two. two now. Swing it at a change up. Bountiful's a good ball club. They are. They are. Yeah, they they uh, they hit the ball hard. They they've uh, played good defense, good pitching. And Another right strikeout. The golden sombrero. You know, Norm, I can play good defense if the pitcher's going to get 13 strikeouts. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean. Well, but, you know, I, th I think that, that the issue is is sometimes you fall asleep watch, watching the pitcher blow people away. And, uh, you know, to their credit, they, when, when the ball's been put in play, they've fielded it. Hasn't, you know, they haven't been asleep. They've, they've made a couple errors, but, uh, you know, for the most part, they've made played good defense. But, yeah, those 13 strikeouts sure don't hurt. Fouled up out of play. Once again, she's up in the count, 0-2. Yeah, she's, looks like she's trying to finish strong here. I don't think we mentioned this. Is check it's up to bat. Baker's on deck. Hopefully we can get to Blackburn, who's in the hole. And looks one right down the middle for strike three. Fifteen strikeouts I've got now. Of course, I've, I've got a lot of chicken scratches on this scorecard. <laughs> well, hopefully if you look over, you can make some sense out of it, Norm. <laughs> Swing and a miss for Baker. Yeah, it's when, when your, your first two batters strike out, your first three batters strike out eight it's, times between the three of them. It's it's a tough day. Well, well, and Miller's working on five strikeouts in a row, th three to end the inning in in this fifth and or sixth and two here. Yeah, she's she's found her rhythm again. In four of the innings, Box Elder got the leadoff run, batter on, and couldn't get him around to score. Yeah, it's, it's looking like she's going to throw a shutout with a, a lot of strikeouts. Good 
down the baseline, but went foul. <clears throat> two and two. Two outs. Down five, not looking good. So she squares around to get her timing down. And, and another strikeout. The game. So six strikeouts in a row, struck at the side. Uh, as she, that's how she started the game was striking out the, the side of the inning and uh, Bountiful quite honestly a, a dominating performance. Box Elder did get some runners on, left way too many runners on base, left loaded bases twice. But, you know, I think that uh, Box Elder's only real chance was when they, uh, when she hit two batters or hit a batter, walked a batter, and then the third baseman made an error. All right, so let me give you next week's schedule. We've got softball on the 26th on Tuesday versus Viewmont. And then uh, we'll have boys volleyball on the 28th versus Clearfield. Thank you, Norm, for joining me. That was a lot of fun. I learned a lot. Uh, you know this game very well. And good luck to Bountiful going forward. Uh, you know, perhaps the best thing that came out of today where, where it was a loss is I don't think there was any injuries. And, and you like to see that. Well, and, and you learn from your losses. You know, uh, it's tough to go through the year ranked number one all year. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's better to take a loss early on, regroup and, and learn from your mistakes and get better than it is to, you know, to, to, to beat them twice. And, you know, I've seen that happen. We, we swept Roy one year in region play, and they came back and beat us and won the state title. So, uh, yeah. Well, I've heard loss, it said loss is not a terrible thing. I've heard it said that you you learn more from the things that you do wrong than what you do right. So that's true. All right, thanks everybody. You've uh, been listening and watching to Beehive Sports Media. We'll catch you next Tuesday and Thursday. Thank you very much.